We're talking sperm quality today because sperm is 50% of our baby making equation. And so many times I see it being completely forgotten and ignored. I'll have patients that come to me, they've been trying to conceive for a year or more and they haven't had a sperm analysis done. Unfortunately, sperm quality has decreased globally in men by more than 50% over the last 50 years. And there's a lot of controversy about why this is, but it is very concerning. So today we're hitting some things that you can start doing right away to help improve your sperm quality. Welcome back to Fertility Mom. If you are trying to get pregnant, no matter where you are on your journey, then make sure you like this channel, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload new content to you every single week. Today we're talking about how to improve sperm quality, and this is something that's really important because a lot of my patients will come in with some sort of male factor infertility as part of what's happening in their fertility journey. And this is something that we can do something about rather quickly. So we wanna make sure we know this is an issue, let's get on top of it. I recently had a patient that came in and his sperm analysis was absolutely terrible. Count was bad, motility was bad, morphology was bad. Their doctors, that couple, their doctors were telling them, listen, you're just not gonna get pregnant unless you have IVF. And it took us a few months. It took between three and four months, but his sperm analysis went from absolutely terrible to normal. About two or three months after that, they were pregnant, they've already had their baby girl. And so this is an example of how you can take a really terrible sperm analysis, but when you are doing the right mix of things, you can come back up to normal. Of course, there are a variety of different factors that matter, but I'm gonna tell you some of the things that we put into place for this patient. So maybe you can start doing these things on your end and see what difference it makes for you. Something I'm finding much more commonly, I would say in the last like four or five years, is that couples who get a bad sperm analysis will be pushed towards IVF much faster without being given any kind of recommendations on what they can do to help improve that analysis. So let me know if this is happening for you. Are you being pushed towards IVF and given no recommendations? This is something I'm finding a lot more nowadays where maybe like seven, eight years ago, there was a little bit of a, okay, well, let's repeat it in a few months. Let's change a couple of things and then repeat it. I'm seeing that much less now and I'm wondering if that's happening for you. Let me know down in the comments. So one of the first things that I usually recommend doing when I see a bad sperm analysis is some dietary changes. Now this will vary depending on the person, but for the most part, the first, thing that I'm going to concentrate on is making sure that that person is getting enough protein. Now the recommendations for this have changed over the years. Protein recommendations that I give for couples who are trying to conceive are much higher than maybe you have heard previously, but this is something that the research is now really supporting. So I recommend that you're getting in at least 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So if you know your body weight in pounds, you'll divide that by 2.2 to get your weight in kilograms, and then you will multiply that by 1.2. That's gonna be the minimum amount of protein that you should be getting per day. And you want that to be from good quality sources. So once you're making sure you have en enough protein in per day, which for some of you, this may be a lot more than what you're normally eating, and it might be a stretch for you. But once you have that under your belt and you're kind of used to it, then we want to look at some other dietary things as well. One of the major things that I want you to look at is making sure that you're having most of your foods come from whole and unprocessed foods. Not every single thing. I would keep to like 80 to 90% of all the food on your plate being whole and unprocessed. And then of course there's gonna be some wiggle room. But if you're getting the majority of your foods from processed foods, packaged foods, things that have a lot of chemicals in them, this is not going to help your sperm analysis and your sperm quality get better. So switch over and make sure you're having the majority of your food be from whole and unprocessed sources. And then the other dietary thing that I want you to do is make sure you're having between two two to three bright colors at minimum per meal. This is gonna help flood your body with antioxidants and nutrients that your body needs and it's the foundation, the building blocks of your sperm. The second thing that we're gonna to use to help improve your sperm quality are going to be supplements. Now if your doctor or your practitioner is telling you that supplements do not make a difference, then you may need to find a new practitioner. Supplements absolutely make a world of difference and when you combine it with all of the, these other changes, they can make the difference between a really poor semen analysis and a normal semen analysis. So don't discount the use of supplements, but also don't go rogue. You wanna be smart about this and not use every every single thing under the sun that you're seeing. Maybe you're getting hit with ads in you know, any kind of social media platform, pro-conception vitamins, things like that. 
really be careful with what you're using and make sure that they're high quality third party tested supplements that have been kind of looked at for heavy metals and things like that. But that being said, supplements absolutely make a difference. And some of the ones that I recommend starting off with are gonna be your fat soluble vitamins. These are gonna be vitamins A, D, E, and K. Now D and K, I recommend having it together because they help with absorption. This should be based off of your personal vitamin D3 lab level. So I recommend getting that checked. I like to keep it between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. So make sure you get that checked and then you dose your vitamin D3 and your K2 based off of that lab level. Vitamin A I recommend getting mostly through your diet. That's gonna be through something like liver. If you can't eat or consume any liver, then you can get it through a supplement like cod liver oil or things like that. For vitamin E, I recommend a tocotrienol only form. Now these are all fat soluble vitamins, which means they should be consumed at a fat containing meal. Generally speaking, this tends to be your largest meal of the day. So you wanna make sure that you're timing your supplements appropriately as well. Don't be taking your fat soluble vitamins on an empty stomach because you will not absorb them. Other supplements that I usually recommend and will vary depending on the sperm analysis will be things like coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. Vitamin C, I think everybody should take. Everyone, I usually put everybody on vitamin C unless you have a very high iron level. If you have a high iron level, you should not be having a lot of vitamin C, but that's a whole other issue. But if you have a high iron level, that needs to be looked at separately, but also I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a lot of vitamin C. It's usually something I recommend for most people. Other things are gonna be things like zinc, selenium, your omega-3s, we absolutely want to have that. And I usually also recommend a probiotic and magnesium. There's going to be other things that we can add in as well. We get into herbal therapies and there have been a lot of good studies shown about the use of high dose ashwagandha in men, but that's not something you should start with. We need to start with a bunch of these other things and then move into herbal therapies after. I like herbal therapies to be the last thing that we add in and not that very first thing because we can get a couple of weird things that happen with the herbs. So don't go rogue on this one. I do have a supplement master manual do available down below. That's something that can help you figure out what are the supplements you should be on and then what herbal therapy should we add into the mix after that. The third thing I recommend you looking at to help improve your sperm quality is looking at your use of plastics. Now I recommend that we get rid of most use of plastics and that's because it has been shown to impact the fertility of men, not just women. I know we hear about this with women, but this has been shown to also impact the fertility of men. It decreases testosterone levels and there is an actual direct toxic effect that it has on sperm cells themselves. So I recommend that we ditch all plastic water bottles. You don't wanna be drinking water or drinks from plastic water bottles. I also recommend that we do not heat anything up in plastic or warm food up and then put it into a plastic container. For the most part, we wanna really decrease our use of plastics and that does decrease that toxic effect, not only on the sperm themselves, but it will also help with your testosterone levels. So these are some things that I would start with when you're trying to improve your sperm quality. And I know there's a million other things, right? There's a million other things that we can layer into this plan, but these are the basics that I would absolutely start with. It can take a little bit of time to do some of this stuff. It can take some time to phase out the plastics. It can take some time to phase in all of those supplements. And you wanna make sure that you're doing it right, having it become part of your daily life. If you're going from drinking a ton of energy drinks and drinking a lot of things out of plastics and warming up your food in plastic and then also eating a ton of processed food, these things that I'm giving you today might take you a little bit of time to do and that's okay. These are not the only things. These are just the things that I would start with and then we layer more into the plan based off how you're doing, how your labs are, how your sperm analysis is. And if you're interested in the exact supplement protocols that I do use, you can check out the Fertility Supplement Master Manual. I have a lot of different things in there about what you can do to help improve your sperm analysis. I hope that video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, hit me down in the comment box below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.